And certainly. But nobody ever calls in. I, I don't understand that. It's weird. But except, except when we have Star Trek. We talk about Star Trek people call. Anyway, the number, if you want to try calling in, is one two five three two zero three six six nine five. That's one two five three two zero three six six nine five. 203 Or you can just email me and I'll, you know, hey, I read all the emails. Anyway, we're going to go on break. When we come back, well, me and James are going to have a roundtable and discussion about implants and stuff like that. So stay tuned. Please check out the Night Dreams Talk Radio website at www.nightdreamstalkradio.com. Also, if you want to keep our show free of advertising, just hit the donate button. Give a buck or two. Remember, all prior shows are always free to listen to. We at Night Dreams Talk Radio thank you for your support. You are listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio Network. From our compound to you worldwide. With your host, Gary Anderson. And that is me. Our guest tonight was Timothy Collin. He was a number ninth implant removal from the late Dr. Roger Lear and his surgical team. I tell you, tonight, for some reason, he just didn't want to talk, James. I I know it. And, you know, I've, I've watched the video of Dr. Lear removing that implant and I've seen the implant on the video and um, it's amazing and I, I think he's still fighting an internal battle it's it's a give and take I think he wants to but he's not quite there yet and he'll I guess he'll come around on his own time I feel I really feel for the guy I know he's going through a lot well as he said he feels he's been in you know abducted two or three times since then oh yeah I don't doubt that at all I, I definitely think he's been abducted two or three times and I actually think 
Um, several of his family members, his daughters probably have been as well. I wonder if he's been abducted since the last time he's been on the show, because even, you know, he wouldn't even talk as much as the last time he was on the show. It was like he, it, there was a wall there and he just didn't want to step past it this time at all. Yeah, I know. And I, I actually think he's, he's got another implant also. I, I asked him that and I think he kind of thinks there is. I think he's kind of really afraid to even find out if there is one, but I kind of think there possibility that there is one. I do know that um, the fellow telephone connection was wasn't as good as it as it should be either. Well, considering he, he has new phones, and and, and the, the the phone line on his landline should be crystal clear, but the, it, this time it was doing something different than it did those other times. The other times it was like scratchy. You know, on mm-hmm. key words, this time it was this kind of, you know, weird, off-sounding. And, and and there was no way I could correct it on my end. And I and I know it's not my end. It was coming from him. And, and it's just like, you know, when I asked him, you know, here recently, I, I said, okay, you got a new phone. And he doesn't have these phone problems when he's talking to other people. So I don't know right. what is like. It's something when he starts, we start talking about a certain subject. That's when it starts in. Have you noticed if we, when we talked to this BS a little bit, you know, just to talk, it didn't do it. I did notice that. I noticed that big time. And I, 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 I definitely think that uh, that I think he's got an implant. I think they can hear. And I think it maybe if it's not them, it's programmed with certain words or biorhythms, whatever you're talking about. It doesn't really want it to get out there. Maybe it sends interference. These are all plausible things, but I know it sure adds up. It lines up that way uh, over the last two or three interviews. I don't know. It, it is really bizarre. But I was hoping, you know, we were going to get more information and we actually got less. So I want to apologize to the listeners out there. Uh, I mean, it, Timothy is one of the nicest pe- persons I've ever known. And, you know, he is a, well, more than a Facebook friend, you know. And, and I got to know him, you know, for the past year. And and he's a really sincere person. But I think there's something to the story that is going on. And I, I think maybe he's scared to talk about it. I don't know if it's family related or he's just scared because he maybe doesn't want to be abducted again. I don't know. I think that I think those are all possibilities. I definitely don't think he wants to say anything, and he don't want him to maybe abduct him because of something he says he shouldn't feels he feels he maybe he shouldn't talk about. I do I do think he's got an internal battle going on there with something. But I will say this: he's one of the most sincere, honest people you'll ever meet. Oh yeah. Now again, uh, January. Let me look here. Uh, let me see. Second. Yeah, second. I just want to make sure it was the second because, you know, the way I, at my age, yeah. You know, okay, yeah. yeah. On the second, the day after New Year's, we have, well, we have Terry Lovelace coming back on, a former U.S. Attorney General, Assistant Attorney General. I got to put the word assistant in there. And he has a story. We're going to get into it a lot deeper with him. And what he said in the past has been really scary. I'll tell you that. I've had dreams. I don't know about you, but I have had some dreams because it really scared me with some of the stuff he said. Uh, Yeah, especially the part that keeps him up at night. I have visions of that along with that other thing we talk about (laughs) in Wacky News. But, yeah, that those are some um, visions that even him. He talks about. And, you know, even Terry, another very honest, sincere and with conviction, honest guy, his story is legit. But even him, I think, took a few years before he could really come out with with all of it, and then he's still coming out with some stuff. Yeah, he said when on the show he's going to come out with some stuff that he hasn't told anybody. So you know, if that happens, that's going to be even more scarier. I just Uh-oh. think about you know what he said when he was on that craft, and it was like a conveyor type belt he was standing on. It was transporting them in the craft because it was so huge. He heard all those screams from humans. He saw humans naked holding their clothes in front of him. Could you imagine you've been abducted? Now you're naked, men, women, and children. 
and, yeah. and, and emotional being so scared yeah because you you don't know what's going on you and even if you do rationalize i just been abducted by aliens and why am i naked what are they going to do to me and they weren't released they weren't returned so what happened to those people Ooh, that's a scary thought right there you know I kind of did a little research, and that uh, craft was so huge. It kind of reminds me of the craft that the Japanese flight in Af- or, um, Alaska, the pilot described how huge that was. And when Terry says in there, it's so huge. you got conveyor belts. you got people bellowing and screaming in anguish and pain, being terrorized and, and all kind of misery. And you can't, he couldn't move nothing but his eyeballs as he's looking around and hearing these sounds. That's got to be very horrific. Well, yeah, you hear men and women screaming in pain. I, I think that would be more than anything terrifying to the point where you, you, you and you can't move because they got you paralyzed. And, and right. But your brain is still functioning and you're going, could you imagine the thoughts you would have? And on top of it, when he saw these, whatever they were, in jars of liquid, or tubes, I should say, you know, of a liquid, of humanoids, uh, clones, or whatever they were, and one of them kind of opened their eyes and looked at him. I, 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 it'd be, I can see why he has to sleep with a flashlight and a gun next to his bed. Well, yeah, you're on, a, you're on a conveyor belt. You can't move nothing but your eyeballs, and you're hearing not one or two, hundreds, hundreds of people, men, women, and children, bellowing and screaming in pain. And you know that conveyor belt is taking you to be next, okay? Now, let that work on your brain a little bit. While you're going on this conveyor belt, you move your eyes a little bit to the left, and you see in this tube a what for lack of a better word, is some kind of hybrid. And when you're looking at it, it knows you're looking at it. It opens its eyes and makes eye contact with you. So that's even more horror on top of other horrors. Well, you know, it reminds me. One time I seen on PBS, this is about five, six years ago, they showed out how, you know, they clean out chickens. Because, you know, if you don't gut a chicken out right, bacteria can set in. And yep. then people are going to get sick when they buy a chicken, okay? So they they put the, the chickens, they hang them on a conveyor belt, right, by their feet. And they come through this machine, it just grabs everything and pulls it out in one pull. Mm. And, and, and a nice, clean removal of everything. And, and I just think about these aliens, these people, you know, being on a conveyor belt, being on tables, you know, it's screaming and pain. It's, it's, who knows what they're doing to them? I tell you, it's, it's it's horrid. And if this is actually going on, and that it tells me that the government surely knows what's going on because they they know what uh, Terry Lovelace has been saying. They know what Travis Walton has been saying. Calvin Parker and all these other people have been saying for years. Something is going on, and our government just basically is in denial mode, maybe for a reason. Maybe they just are scared that we won't, as a civilization, be able to handle the truth. But I, I tell you one thing, I would like to know, because I tell you one thing, I mean, how safe are you? Are you safe in your own bed at night? Okay, are you safe getting in the car, going to the grocery store, or going to work? Or if you're going on a camping trip, or you're going to go see somebody in another state, how safe are you in that car? It tells me you're not. And Right. And they're, they're hiding that from us. Absolutely. And... And that is the one enigma that I have yet to come up with any kind of defense or or, or a thing to help or protect from. I mean, I've I've covered all kind of things from other monsters and spiritual beasts and all kind of things and ways to overcome it and help it and evict it. But this one, you're powerless. There's no, the, and and the government already knew. That him and his buddy went through that before he ever did anything. Because when they were in the hospital getting treated for radiation, 
uh, they came in and they, like they already knew they'd been up to seen something they shouldn't have seen or been abducted or whatever. Oh yeah, and that's the scary part. 